fix my computer. So, man, let me know. All right. Great. Thank you, sir. Hello again everyone, Tim here from timscomputerfix.net. You know, I had the honor of building several gaming computers and uh, I just figured I would start recording some of these so I can give you guys a sneak peek of uh, the regiment that I go through building custom gaming computers in my shop. Now every technician has their own way of building their custom computers and I have mine. So I'm just sharing with you. Uh, the route I take in building custom computers. I, I take a lot of pride in building these and I definitely want my customers to have a top quality product when I'm done. I always use quality name brand parts high-end when I do my computer builds. So, so our parts just came into our shop so I'm going to give you a rundown of the parts we're using here. I'll have a complete list and prices at the home page the comment section on YouTube here so let's get started with our first part we have here that UPS delivered so we're starting off with our DVD drive this is the Asus DRW-24B1ST it's just a basic 24x DVD burner next up this is our ASRock Z77 Pro 4 LGA 1155 Z77 motherboard USB 3.0 ATX so that's going to be the motherboard we're going to go with on this build this certainly isn't the highest end of motherboards but is still a very good motherboard for gaming next up is the i7 2700K processor. Now I chose this because of its for its overclockability and I also have purchased a uh, a cooler that's going to support overclocking a heat sink so uh, we'll, we'll get to that here in a second but that's the processor we're going with. Next up we have the Seasonic 750 watt ATX power supply 80 plus gold certified Fully modular, SLI ready. It's a very good power supply, good brand. This will allow for overclocking and upgradability. Next up, I chose the Noctua NH D14 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter CPU heatsink cooler. This CPU heatsink cooler comes highly recommended from other technicians that I know who use it for overclocking. Its reviews are very well. A stellar heatsink. Okay, here we have the G Skill Rip Jaw 2 times 8 gig sticks. This is going to have 16 gigs of memory, DDR3 SD RAM. This is PC3 1700 memory. 2133 bus speeds and for my operating system I chose to go with the SanDisk Extreme SD SSDX 120 gig SATA 3 solid state hard drive now this will be I'll be installing my Windows 8 operating system on this I will also have two other hard drives for my data I also chose here to go with the EVGA GeForce GTX 670 for the win, sporting two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. Also supports PCI Express if I ever decide I wanted to add another card. But this is for it being October 2012, a very high-end card for its make. 
I grabbed up a Cooler Master Mega Flow 200R4, 200mm red LED cooler. That's going to go well with my computer case, which I will get to here in a second. Here is my Windows 8 OEM. Ready to go with that. And now my case, I chose to go with a Cooler Master. This is the Cooler Master Storm Enforcer Mid Tower case. This case, this particular case here, sells on Newegg for about $79. And there's where my Cooler Master fan is going to go that I purchased. It's got a nice side panel window, so you can have a look inside and see what, see all your computer parts. It's got a front door that kind of swings open. It's got a 120 millimeter fan on the back. It's got a 200 millimeter fan on the front that draws air in. That comes with the case. Very nice bottom mount for your power supply and also Slots here for your water cooling if you ever wanted to upgrade to water cooling. Nice painted interior case. Got all your front panel wires here. Front panel has a reset button and has USB 3.0. Has two USB 3.0 ports. Here you see the fan here that comes with the case. So that's the, that's the gaming case I have chose for this build. Now I really like pretty much all of the Cooler Master Storm series cases have very good airflow, which is extremely important when you're building high-end computers. Now before we go through all the trouble of just throwing our parts in the computer and getting our wire management done, the very first thing that I always do when I get a new motherboard in is I do what's called a out-of-the-box boot. And basically what that means is, is when a motherboard comes in, before I mount it or go through any labor of putting it in a case, I lay it on my bench and I perform a boot, a one-time naked boot, to be sure that this board is not DOA. Because the last thing you want to do is have to put all this together in your case, turn it on and realize that you have a DOA motherboard and now you have to take it all back out of your case and put it all back in the box and ship it off. So that's what we're going to do here. At this point we'll go ahead and test our power supply also. And here you see this power supply comes in a nice silt case. That's Seasonic. Also for the wires here, they also package those very nicely. Put them in a nice carrying case. Never really understood that really. They'll never go back in it. Um, there's no really no reason to package them like this, but I just think it's just for looks. It is a top quality power supply, the Seasonic is for sure. So here's my cables. We'll go ahead and pull our power supply out of its bag. And there we have it. You can set this power supply to not spin under 30% load. Then the fan kicks on after a 30% load. So we're going to go ahead and get our processor seated here. So we're going to undo the lever on the motherboard on our socket. Flip up the lid. We're going to take off the protective protective socket cover that comes with new motherboards. Just pop it off and we'll hold on to it just in case we have to send this board back for any reason. Okay, here's our 2700K. We're looking for the gold triangle in the corner. I found it here where my thumb is. That gold triangle there is going to line up when we set it in with the triangle here, the white triangle, that's on the socket of the motherboard. So that way we know we're orientated correctly. So we'll just set our processor into place, nice and gently. It goes in with no force. 
Just kind of set it in. Give it a little wiggle to be sure she's in there flush. And then we'll close our lid. And we'll go ahead and latch that lid down. Be sure it's securely in place. Push the lever down. Now it's going to have some tension, but it's supposed to. It's going to feel really tight there, but that's how that's how the lever works. Hold your processor in place nice and snug. So we're just going to go with the stock heat sink cooler here that came with the processor, the Intel, just for our test boot here. So we're just kind of lock this processor, this heat sink in the place. And you want to be a bit careful here. You want to be sure. I've seen uh, some people make mistakes here with this stock heat sink with these little plastic pins that go through the board. I always find it a good idea to flip the board over when I'm done just to look at these wings, these plastic wings here to be sure they're spread out and clipped into place properly. Because if one of those are off or two, that means that this heat sink is not sitting flush on the processor. So I just give it a little double check there just to be sure. Then we'll uh, go ahead and plug in our heat sink fan. That's always important, like so. Plug it into your CP fan header, CPU fan header on your motherboard. This is also a good time to make sure that our video card is working well. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and register the video card while you have those stickers on the back that you can still read serial numbers, model numbers, go ahead and register your card so you get your warranty honored in case anything ever goes wrong. So we'll just kind of hang our board close to the edge of our bench and we'll very carefully just slide our new video card in the PCI Express slot. For one card, they recommend the bottom slot. We'll just kind of snap it into place nice and easy. And there you go. Yeah, so at this point, we just go ahead and put our RAM in the, in, into place. We have two sticks here. I'll just go ahead and use both sticks. Shouldn't be an issue. There's one. And then here goes the other one. You want to be sure they're orientated right. Be sure they're going in the slots properly. Now when doing this bench boot here, we want to be sure that our motherboard is sitting on something like a piece of wood. I also want to be sure that I'm grounded well. I'm standing on an anti-static mat, but they also have these anti-static wrist straps that you can wear. So grounding is real important. We don't want to set this on any kind of metal or any kind of uh, rubber or anything like that. Could melt because of the heat. Next up is our power supply. So we'll go ahead and plug our six pin CPU header in and then we'll got our 24 pin power 12 volt. Snap that into place. And now we're going to put our two PCI Express power plugs into the card. Now be very careful. You don't want to bend the card. There's nothing supporting the card. So, so just be really careful about this. Don't bump it or don't knock it. Don't bend it. Don't use too much force. All we want to do is get a boot, a real quick boot to be sure we can get to BIOS. So from this point, we just hook up our monitor we hook up a mouse and we hook up a keyboard and we are ready to turn on our motherboard for the first time to confirm that it does work. So I'm going to take a, a screwdriver and short the two pins that headers that go to the power button.
the positive and the negative, and only those. So I touch those two pins, we'll touch them, and we now have power. And at this point in time, you just want to check to make sure that we can boot to the BIOS. And here we have post, and here we have the BIOS. So you can go in there, check, check everything to be sure it all looks okay, check the time, I set all that, and you can also check your BIOS version and just make sure everything looks normal in the BIOS. But so far so good on this one. Okay, so now we want to replace our stock heat sink with our Noctua. So once we get it out of the box, we'll see it comes with some brackets that we have to install on the motherboard in order to get this cooler to fit. Here's our X bracket. You see our slots here. It comes fully with instructions. You just follow the instructions for your particular board. It goes on quite easy. Here are the lockdown screws that come with it. Basically, we just kind of slide these screws into the bracket like so. All four of them. Lock them into place. Yeah, then we just, once that's ready, you can just flip the board up and we're going to slide this X bracket, put, this, put the pins through the uh, holes there around the socket, slide our back plate into place, this X back plate, making sure things line up here. Slides right on in, fits very well. Then there's these little small plastic washers that fit around them, spacers that fit around those. Once you get those into place, like so, clean it. we'll put the brackets on. There's two brackets that go on that help hold the heat sink into place. We clean up the processor, then we use the Noctua. I like to use the Noctua compound that comes with it, tested with this CPU cooler. So just put a little, a little bit'll do you there in the middle, and you just kind of set our heat sink right down on that. Screw it down, lock it down into place, and our CPU cooler is ready for business. This is the clearance that we have here on our memory. Just perfect, just enough. Something that I've always worried about when buying large heat sinks like this is the clearance, but this one cleared well. So we put slide our center fan in, into place. Get it locked down. And from that point, our cooler is looking good. I'm going to go ahead and just plug them in to our fan headers on the board. And now it's time to set our motherboard into play. Once I've got my standoff set in properly, we're going to just ease our motherboard down into the case. Nice and easy. We also have our heat, our IO shield there installed. So we'll set our motherboard down in the case nice and easy like so. Then we can line it up with our IO shield. Kind of get an eye on it. Be sure it lines up. Get it into place. Oh, that's looking good there. And then what you want to do at this point is double check all of the secure points of your board to be sure you see a standoff on every on every secure point and in every hole. Once you verify that, then we can lock the motherboard down with the motherboard screws. Now these standoffs are very important. I've seen people make mistakes and not use standoffs. These standoffs keep the motherboard up off the back of the metal case slightly so it, the board doesn't ground out. Also, these standoffs help to properly ground the motherboard to the case. So really important, don't forget to use your standoffs. So I just tighten these up here and we're good. 
Next, we have our power supply. It's ready to go in the case. I like this case because we have our wire management, so I'm going to slide some of our cables through the back slot here because we're going to feed those up through the back. I'm going to kind of hide them. And we'll get our power supply kind of moved around there. Feed our wires through and mount our power supply. This is a modular power supply, meaning that I can add wires as I need them instead of having all the wires hardwired attached to the power supply. Makes it kind of a nightmare for wire management. But you can see here on the back of the case, the design here, if I ever needed to get to that heat sink, I don't have to take the motherboard out. All of my wires feed through nicely and can be hidden on the back side of this case. Here's our hard drive caddy, our 3.5 inch hard drive caddy. Slides out nice and easy. Just two clips hold it in. So we're going to remove that at the moment. Give myself a little bit more room while I work with these other parts. Now it's time for the video card. So we're going to slowly lower it into place. Line it up just right. Snap it into place. Be sure it's fully seated. Yep, pulling up on it there, you saw it did clip in, so it is fully seated. Now I can uh, secure it, with these two screws to the case. And now I can go ahead and put our SLI power to them, six pin, two of them. Lock those into place. And now our power supply is installed, ready to go. So here we're going to have a look at the front panel wires. So here we have the, try to get it into focus here, the power switch, power LED, the reset button, the reset switch, the power switch, and the hard drive LED. These all feed from the front panel down to the front panel header on the motherboard shown here. So basically, the motherboard is usually marked for positive and negatives. So we just have to pretty much just follow the diagram that's on the board or in the instruction book and just plug in our front panel wires into our front panel header on the board. Some of them come with a, an adapter that you can use that, that fits over the whole header, so you don't have to kind of f fumble with these little wires, but, but in this case, that's not, we didn't do it that way. We just went ahead and plugged them in. Now here is our audio cable shown here. That's plugged in. Here is our front panel USB 3.0 cable and that's going to go into the USB 3.0 header on the board. Step that into place nicely. Good to go. I'm choosing to remove this filter off the front of the computer. I've removed the front panel, I'm removing the, the screen there and I'm going to go ahead while I have this off I'm going to install the DVD RW drive. I'm going to just locks right into place like that. Pretty simple. And then we can go ahead and take off our uh, latch, cover latch for the DVD drive and put our front panel back on, snaps right into place. And there we go. We're good to go on the front panel. I'm going to put our 200 millimeter fan in place. Nice and easy. It just slides right in. And then you can lock everything in from the Four screws up top. Screw it into place. And then go ahead and get our power header hooked up for that and good to go. Here's our SSD drive. We're going to go into our SSD caddy that comes with the case. Secure it in there. Set everything into place. 
kind of pay attention to where you want to route your wires here because we're starting to get into wire management now. Very important. I take great pride in my wire management. We can go ahead and slide our caddy back in our hard drive caddy. We can get ready to put our hard drives in. Now I'm going to be putting two one terabyte hard drives in here. I'm going to be using the terabyte Western Digital Black for my main data. Hard, the SSD is going to have my operating system. We'll slide that into place and lock it in. And I also have a Western Digital Terabyte Green. That's just my scratch disk. So we'll plug all our wires in. And now we're going to proceed. This is what it looks like with minimal wire management here. Have not quite completed the wire management. Wire management is important to me. It makes the system look good. It helps it breathe better. And this is a mess here, so we're going to take care of it. When my customer gets their computer, if they ever look in it, or in this case, they have a window, I want them to say, wow, that just looks good. So if you see here, a little bit better on the wire management. I've got my wires tied back nicely with wire ties, streamlined. The least wires I see, the better. Now we can put our cover on, and that'll also help disguise some of the wires, but this is pretty much what this computer is going to look like with the cover on it. And I think from this point we fire it up for the first time. There we go. Power on. Hopefully we'll get a post. Over here at this small screen here. Yes, we do. ASRock. We have post, and we can get right into the BIOS. So from this point, just install your operating system of choice and enjoy your new gaming computer. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please rate and subscribe to my feed. Let me know your comments. I'd love to hear them. You can catch me over at timscomputerfix.net. That's my website. And in the future, we'll have a few more other computer bills that I've recorded. So. We'll see how those turn out also. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time, everyone. See you soon.